PVC, UPVC, and CPVC all seem similar to the casual observer because they're made with the same material called polyvinyl chloride, but there's a slight difference in the chemical makeup during the manufacturing process that set these all apart, and I'm going to explain that in the video, and then I'm going to briefly discuss PEX tubing. So PVC is made from polyvinyl chloride to make a very strong piping, and it's heated and molded in order to do that. And it's so strong that manufacturers need to add additional plasticizing polymers so that it becomes a little bit more pliable. And it's way more pliable than something like an unplasticized PVC, which is called UPVC. All PVC types can be cut using plastic cutting hacksaw blades or power tools and they're joined using gluing compounds instead of soldering, like in metal piping. The ASTM standard allows PVC to be used in applications under 140 degrees Fahrenheit, and any temperature over 140 degrees will cause softening of regular PVC like this, and it can cause the joints to soften up as well and make leaks. So since PVC is plastic, it offers a little bit amount of give when the pipes aren't sized perfectly, and sometimes handymen prefer this over using metal piping because your sizing won't always be perfect and this is easily pliable. Those plasticizing polymers that were in PVC are left out of UPVC, which is why it's called unplasticized polyvinyl chloride. And it makes it a very hard plastic and it's so hard that it's almost as rigid as cast iron piping. So UPVC must be cut perfectly because it has no flexibility to it like PVC. So when you're cutting it, it has to be perfect because it doesn't allow for any give. UPVC isn't too popular in America, but because it's so durable, it's sometimes the material of choice for replacing sewage lines and cast iron piping system. It's also frequently used in manufacturing exterior drainage systems such as a rain gutter downspout. It remains highly durable and stays rigid instead of flexing. So it's often used as a replacement for wood, like on window frames. So CPVC is more often used in drinking water than PVC, but the two should not be used interchangeably because CPVC is altered by a free radical chlorination process, which increases the chlorine content in the material. This chemical difference allows CPVC to be used in a wider range of temperatures, which is why a lot of building codes require it to be used over PVC for hot water applications. So like I said before, PVC should not be used in applications where the temperature exceeds 140 degrees Fahrenheit, whereas CPVC can be used in applications all the way up to 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Most North American PVC pipe uses a nominal size, NPS, while CPVC is available in either NPS standard sizing or CTS sizing, which is copper tube size. Before purchasing CPVC, be aware of what your use will be. Often CTS CPVC is a light yellowish color, while Schedule 80 CPVC is a light gray color. CPVC is widely used for hot and cold potable water applications, and its durability makes it often used for commercial and industrial applications as well. Because of its wider range of applications, CPVC is usually pricier than PVC. That being said, it is still very cost effective and it's versatile. PVC glue or cement does not work like regular glue but it breaks down the surface of the pipe that it's applied to and it bonds the two pipes that you're putting together together. And since PVC differs in hardness among all the different types, you have to make sure you get the right cement or glue for whatever PVC you're buying. We have adapters for all of these if you're looking to connect CPVC or PVC pipe to copper line. And I'll put a link of this into the description. So this is PEX tubing and it stands for cross-linked polyethylene and it's made from high density polyethylene and it has a cross-linked bond in the polymer structure. So this sounds very complicated but it just means that this has a high density and flexible finish and it can withstand very high temperatures. PEX doesn't require any primers and there are a lot of different connection options like shark bite, compression, expansion, crimp, clamp and press. I have another video where I go over all of these. So the biggest upside to PEX compared to any PVC is how flexible it is because it makes it very easy to work with. And to cut this and make changes to it, all you need is a little clipping tool and it cuts it in a second. So you don't need any saws or blades or anything. There's also flex PVC, which cuts easily, but it can't be used for drinking water. PEX is more cost effective for home plumbing compared to CPVC or copper piping. And it comes in a variety of colors. So you can have red for your hot water 
and then it comes in blue for your cold water lines or you can just have a neutral line that's white. Because PEX has minimal space requirements, it comes in a large spool and you can store a ton of it without taking up any space and has a high temperature tolerance. So it's becoming the standard for home plumbing and business plumbing. It's also very easy to install in conjunction with copper pipes and in general, it's easier to install than copper. I have a few videos where I go into PEX with much more detail. So if you're interested in that, just check out the channel and search for PEX. They'll be very helpful if you're interested in buying this and using it for plumbing. And if you want to know more about Schedule 40 versus Schedule 80 PVC piping and you want to use that for venting applications, then I have a video that I'll link at the end of this video.